How's it going guys? I'm CTM Amygdala and welcome back to another Call of Duty video. So the title for this video might confuse some of you because as you know 6v6 isn't going away. There's currently four 6v6 multiplayer maps in the beta. However, in this video I'm going to be comparing the Call of Duty content from back in the day to the Call of Duty content now. and how I think this will overall affect Call of Duty Cold War. So if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to smash that like button and also don't forget to subscribe. All right, so to start about two months ago, the devs at Treyarch said that there is going to be a new progression system that ties Warzone regular multiplayer and zombies all together and we'll end up getting more details on that soon well now the game launches in only about three weeks i think it's actually under a little bit under three weeks now and we still haven't heard anything about this new progression system and with Modern Warfare 2019, they were not hesitant about revealing their new progression system at all. Which makes me think either one of two things are going to happen. Either A, the progression system is a lot like the seasonal officer ranks. And they're putting it off because they know that they'll get backlash from the community. Or option B, they're still fine-tuning the progression system a little bit to either make it more like the prestige system, which is what people have been calling for, or to just kind of make it more rewarding in general, which I personally hope this is the case that they're going for. So the first thing that I feel like they did better back in the day is skill-based matchmaking. And even in older but cause are still more recent like advanced warfare and black ops 3 even though those were futuristic i still think that they handled skill-based matchmaking much much better than modern warfare does because in these games you would go more even towards the start of the game's life cycle and have more games where you would get roughly around a 1 kd and then i'd get better as the game reached the end of its life cycle because the KD doesn't change as much when you already have like say 30,000 kills. Even if you pub stop a couple of games in a row, your KD is still not going to go up that much if you've got like a ton of kills in that game. So I was able to pub stomp more consistently as the game's life cycle went on and it felt like I was actually progressing and getting better throughout the game's life cycle. Now, and today with Modern Warfare, they have it to where skill-based matchmaking focuses mainly on recent performance and your overall level, like career level and officer rank level. And I personally don't feel like I've improved at all since the game launched. I've been sitting around a .96 to a .98. KD pretty much for the last 10 months in this game because I'll have three games where I do really good and then three games where I do really bad and it just keeps on that same exact cycle because the skill based matchmaking is so strong in this game and Cold War is said to have a very similar score based match skill based matchmaking system to Modern Warfare which I definitely don't feel is a step in the right direction. Now this takes me into the 6v6 side of things, and there are honestly a lot of things where Call of Duty hasn't changed too much over its life cycle. And some of these things include, like, the amount of guns in each game. Like, for example, back in Black Ops 1, we had 31 primary weapons, and I believe 11 secondary weapons. And then Black Ops 2, we had 30 primary weapons and 10 secondary weapons. And then now in Modern Warfare 2019, 
we've still got 28 primary weapons and I believe 10 or 11 secondary weapons. So it's really been right around the same, except nowadays we're getting DLC weapons. So as of right now, there's actually a lot more weapons in Modern Warfare than there were like back in the day because we didn't have DLC weapons. But they're still around the same amount at launch. So I'm really not too worried about weapons for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I think they'll completely smash that even though there are only about three or four in each category for the beta. Another thing that has been pretty consistent is Zombies mode. In Black Ops 1, we had 1 and 2 actually. We had two launch zombie maps and four DLC zombie maps that were all unique. And now you look at Black Ops 4 and we also still had two zombie maps at launch and four unique zombie maps throughout the DLC seasons. So I'm not really too worried about zombies content in this game, even though we only have one zombies map revealed at launch right now. I'm assuming there's going to be a second one that they're going to come out with that's either going to be like a smaller map or either a remastered map at launch. And I think that's another thing that they're going to do really well on. But now I'm going to get into the stuff that is kind of taking a beating in terms of content and this is going to be the 6v6 multiplayer maps. So the first thing that I want to point out is that these newer games have larger team game modes that have their own maps with them. So it's naturally going to cut into the 6v6 content. And back in World War II, we had three large game maps. And then Modern Warfare, we've got four uh, 12v12 maps and then three ground war maps. So with these maps, they're kind of splitting the player base and we're getting less maps for 6v6 as a result. And it's also on top of just taking into the amount of maps at launch, it's also taking into how many maps we're getting in DLCs. So for DLCs, back in Black Ops 1, we had 10 unique DLC maps and two reimagined DLC maps with a map pack that had four remastered zombie maps. And then in Black Ops 2, we had 12 unique DLC maps and four reimagined DLC maps. And when I say reimagined DLC maps, I'm not just talking about remastered where they put them in the game exactly as they were before, like for Modern Warfare. Like when I say reimagined in the Black Ops games, they completely re-overhauled the maps. Like they had the same layouts and same buildings and everything. But for example, in Black Ops 1 we had Summit, which was the snowy map on top of a mountain. In Black Ops 2, they reimagined Summit to a map called Uplink, which was the exact same layout, the exact same buildings, but instead of on top of a snowy mound, it was on top of a mound that was out in the middle of the jungle, and it was during nighttime during a rainstorm instead of snowing. So they essentially completely reimagined the map in terms of how it looked. So now, we're not necessarily getting less DLC maps, but they're, they really changed up the formula to where sometimes it kind of feels like we're getting less DLC maps overall. Because if you look at World, of, World War II, we had 11 unique DLC maps and one re reimagined DLC maps. And well, that was the same as Black Ops 1 essentially with 12 DLC maps. We also had the Zombies pack in Black Ops 1, which we don't have, we didn't have in World War II. Even though we did get these larger maps, it was still something that was completely separate and I personally never played. I didn't really, like I said in previous videos, I don't like these large team maps. So these are just essentially game modes that I'm just never going to touch. I'm never going to play these maps. 
And then in Black Ops 4, we had nine unique DLC maps and five remastered maps. Not reimagined, just remastered, exactly the same as they were in previous games. And then in Modern Warfare, we've now got seven DLC maps and nine remastered maps. So as you can tell, nowadays we're kind of going less away from unique maps and more towards remastered maps, which I guess it's kind of a good thing because the older maps are generally better and people generally like them more. But at the same time, I personally want to see new maps in the games. And I think that's going to lead me into how launch, how the launches kind of work and the differences between launch maps then versus launch maps now. And in Black Ops 1, we had 14 unique launch maps. In Black Ops 2, I believe we had 14 unique, unique launch maps and then one reimagined m map that was Nuketown. They reimagined Nuketown for Black Ops 2 on top of 14 unique maps just like in Black Ops 1. Nowadays, with World War 2, we've only got... We only had nine launch maps. And then Black Ops 4, we only had 10 unique launch maps and four remastered maps. And then Modern Warfare, we only essentially had six 6v6 maps at launch. And then we got one shortly after the game came out. But that's still a pretty big difference between 14 back in the day and 6 or 7 now. That's how big these large team maps are taking a toll on the state of 6v6. And I personally think this is actually a pretty easy fix. I think all they really have to do is take a small portion of these large maps and just throw them into the 6v6 game modes. And voila, you've got, say, 8 unique 6v6 maps and then like 4 or 5 more that are just portions of the larger maps. So you've still got 13 6v6 maps to rotate through. Then maybe throw in like 2 or so remastered, I'd be totally cool with that. But they haven't done that and I've got no idea if they will or won't for Cold War. I honestly hope they do, but I also think they should give us more 6v6 maps in this game because the price range is also rising on video games this year because Black Ops Cold War is going to be $70 instead of the standard $60. So I'm thinking we should have content that is more equal at launch to how games were back when they just raised the price point to $60, like back with Modern Warfare and stuff. And I honestly think that's going to wrap up my video, and I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.